Let's jump into JSON data today with EDF's mapping data flow. So I'm in my Azure Data Factory a browser UI and have a mapping data flow already open. What I intend to do is to take my movies CSV data, which is the normal file that I use, uh, which is CSV co uh, comma delimited file. I use this for demoing and this has data about movies. It's got uh, movie titles, the year it was released, it has a, a pipe separated list of genres. So the genres is a multi-value field stored within a single column in the CSV file. So to accomplish multiple values within that single column, we've um, separated each different genre with a pipe. And has rating information and so on. What I want to do is I want to take this now. I want to store this as uh, JSON data. So I want to create a complex data type using hierarchies and arrays. And what I'll do is I'll turn the genres into uh, just a plain string uh, column into arrays of strings based on the number of, so the number of elements in each array will be based upon the number of genres found within this pipe limited string. And then the rest of the columns will store as properties of a top level movies a complex structure. So how do we do that? Well, we start with our source, and the source is just a regular source that you've already been using in ADF. Mapping data flow, this is a CSV source, you've seen the data. Uh, and if you look at the, the columns and the inspect, it's uh, really everything is just a string because I haven't um, detected those types, I haven't changed them. This is a text limited file, so everything comes through as string um, automatically. All right, now the work of creating your hierarchies and your complex data types comes in, in with a um, derived column. So let me do a separate derived column, separate from the one that I already have done. I'll walk you through that one in a second, but what I want to show you is when you create hierarchies, what you're going to do is you're going to go into your um, expression builder and you'll start to build your hierarchy uh, right here. So I'm going to call this, uh, so I already have one for movies. I'll just call this my new hierarchy, um, just to give it the name. That's obvious what I'm doing here for the demo. And then what you can do from that is you can create multiple levels within that. So to uh, save this, to create a hierarchy with different levels within it, you have to assign something to that. So I'm just going to create a placeholder for just a text value right there. Now I can add sub-columns to that. So that could be my top level. My next level could be uh, maybe you know, a level within my hierarchy might be movie name. And so for this, maybe I'll pick something from my list of available fields. I'll use title. And of course, you can do all the transformation and expression language functions within uh, these new hierarchies that you're building as well. And then you can have a sub-column off of that and so on. So that's how you build the hierarchy. So let's come out of this. I'm not going to save any of that. We'll delete that. Let's go back into the hierarchy I've already built so I can show you what I did for movies. So when you build a hierarchy and you click on the top level, and this is what I'll be uh, transforming, I, uh, you can see on the right hand side, you can see in the expression builder, uh, we do show you the full expression. So you could always type it as, as such. Uh, this is the uh, expression behind the uh, UI hierarchy on the left hand side. So everything is still a string. I, I didn't really do any uh, data type um, conversions here in the casting, although I could have. But the key thing is that I'm taking genre and I'm using my split function on that to split out each uh, pipe delimited value of the um, of the genre. All the other columns are just the repeat of what you see from the flat file. So I'm just putting each column in there. And I'm not including Rotten Tomato because it's misspelled and I don't really, really like that column anyway. So I'm just dropping that essentially here in my draft column because I'm going to build this hierarchy and this is what I'm going to use for my JSON. And you can see from here that the values are getting separated by the pipe when you see in the uh, left hand side that this is creating an array and each element in the array is separated by comma so that looks just fine right there so we can cancel out of this and that's all we need to do so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it into um, a JSON file so my sync is going to be movies JSON all that is is pointing to uh, my blob store an output directory and the name of the file I'm setting here in my uh, source options sorry yeah my source options. I'm setting that here in my sync under settings. I'll put to single file and I'm calling movies.json. Now for the mapping what I did was I'm not mapping any of the uh, flat file fields. I'm only mapping the hierarchy, the complex data type to movies. And I'm just calling that movies when it's going to come into the uh, JSON um, file. All right so we can take a look at the data preview see what we're going to get. And you can see that we have movies as the top level and all of these properties are element are inside of that 
uh, hierarchy. And then here's the genres. Now, the way that we show array values uh, in Data Preview is that you click on it. So for each of these, this only found one um, one genre here. So these are all comedy. I think I have to scroll down a little bit so I found a row with multiple types of uh, lots of comedies. There's a drama. And I'm having no luck. There we go. So this one had three, action, comedy, romance. Each one of those falls into the different array elements on that. So I think that looks fine. Now I can write this file. So to write a file, I have to go into the pipeline. The pipeline execution and the debug execution will uh, actually write to the sync. When you're doing data preview, it does not any, write any data to the sync. So this will take about so one to two minutes to execute. And so let me uh, do a quick pause on here, and then we'll come back and take a look at the file when this process is done. Okay, that should be enough time. Let's go and take a look at my Azure Explorer. And there is my uh, movies file. So let's uh, bring that open. We can open this up with uh, Visual Studio Code. And let me bring that in from either screen. All right, and there we go. There are the genres within the array element genres. And there's the other properties of movies now. So that file looks fine. Now let's take that JSON file and let's consume that as a source this time within a data flow. So that was the other data flow that I was bringing up earlier and we're here. So what we want to do is we can point to the JSON movies now with schema. So now there's a schema associated with that. And so I actually want the schema for this demo because I want to do some transformation on that. So I'm pointing directly to my movies.json and the schema is like we already had uh, defined and, dec and created with the other data flow. We have the genre string array and maybe everything else is just a, a flat string. And then movies is the hierarchy. So now let's go over, oopsie, here we go. So we'll go over to the source. And in here we can look at the inspect and we see that everything looks exactly right. It is the movie's uh, complex data type. And let's do a uh, data preview on this. We should see, of course, um, all the data that we saw from the output on the previous data flow. And indeed there it is. And there's the genre array and everything else there. Great. Okay. So what I want to show you is in the derived column, what we can do is we can work with uh, complex data types, including arrays within transformations. So there's a couple of new functions now that have been surfaced within the expression language. And I'm using those within the genre array. So what I can do, because this is an array um, elements now, what I can do is I can do something like take every single genre, uh, every element of the genre array, in uppercase all those. And all I have to do is type a very simple function uh, expression like this, which just says map each of those genres and upper every item within that array. And so when I refresh this, we should get every genre uppercased without needing to address every specific elements within that array. Uh, we're going to map those to every array element with an uppercase for each one. And uh, there we go. And that's it. So that is a quick introduction to how you can work with JSON within mapping data flows.